Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access Coverage. This is episode 74, I'm Enigmas, and today, two simple tasks to complete the Pretty Hate Machine Mark II. We're going to close up the front a little bit. There's a gap between the two thruster pods. We want to close that up. It's just more blocks to absorb damage before we get anywhere near the pilot seat. And we're going to put the guns on. That's a fairly important thing. So with this center portion, it's very, very simple and straightforward. What I'm aiming to do is we want to make sure that it's uh, connected in multiple different places. We don't want things flying apart in chunks if we can avoid it. Easiest way to do that is to make sure that we've got several distinct connections. For something this long, we only if we have like four, that's, that's pretty substantial in terms of how many connections uh, that we've got working. Especially if we're looking at like four on either side, like we're doing here. And it comes down and it connects to the collection of blocks that we've got under the blocks that are holding the pilot seat. So again, we're building out the connections for that part as well as for this front section because we want to make sure that we're, you know, keeping that collection of blocks intact for as long as possible because that's what's protecting our pilot seat from a swift and embarrassing demise. It's going to happen. We're going to we're going to experience some balloon moments. I just know it. But when we do We'll make some adjustments and and then we'll move on from there. I'm not really that uh, that nonplussed about it. Nothing really complicated, but again, because of the nature of this, it's pretty um, condensed. It's a very small area that we're working in. Definitely not a beginner's kind of project. If you want to take it on, if you're just new to this, you want to take it on, you'll learn a lot in the process and you'll probably get it right uh, at some point. Maybe very quickly, maybe not so quickly. I'm just warning people in case they decide to take it on and they're not that experienced with this way of building and they find it quite challenging and, you know, discouraging because it's so challenging thinking that they should be doing better. It's it's not really uh, the kind of thing that I would expect someone to just pick up and, and start running with if they had never really experienced building with prisms only. So that's basically the, that section done, that front section. Like I said, it wasn't complicated, it wasn't drawn out or anything like that. So now, gun placement. And kind of getting a feel for where we can put things that's going to deliver um, some protection to the guns. And also making sure that we're getting good clean firing lines that we're not shooting uh, into the back of other guns. So I, I decided that the first thing that I would do is try sort of the compact uh, option. Here we're just building out the back a little bit because I realized part of the protecting the guns is going to be protecting the... the um, hover blade shrouds because the guns are going to be at least in some capacity connected to those so we want to be a little bit careful about how that's going to work and it's just because of the way things come together sometimes that we didn't necessarily build the shrouds with the intent of adding the guns to them later it's just we built the shrouds where the hover blades were which was at the top of the bot knowing that we were going to have to put the guns on the top of the bot as well the guns would become the new top and then the the hover blades will be just beneath them so just being a little bit cautious and here trying something a little bit different with the mounts um that's not by any means permanent what you're seeing there now we're just trying different shapes for connecting the mounts to the rest of the bot so we've got uh a couple of blocks sticking up from the chassis and then we're building out from there a couple of connections to whatever ends up actually holding the guns when we're done a lot of times what i'll do when i'm building just to cut down on having to go through the inventory screen, and I know a lot of people do this as well, but it's a good tip, is place things somewhere, doesn't necessarily have to be in the final position. We know that we're gonna be messing around with the guns, we're gonna be placing them and moving them and placing them and moving them. So put one somewhere where you know it's not gonna be in the way, and then you can just select that with the middle mouse button, instead of having to go into the inventory uh, screen and select it from there. So that's why, um, you know, you'll see quite often I'll place guns nowhere near where their finished position will be is just because it's it's somewhere where it's handy it's not necessarily going to be in the way and then we can grab it later and make the build process a little bit quicker and easier so we got a good position for the guns we spent a little bit of time placing them to see where we could put them relative to one another and relative to the rest of the bot and then you know it made sense to build a, some kind of uh mount around them the one thing that i never really did properly with the pretty hate machine was gun mounts if you looked at any time, except for the most recent iteration, at the back of the Pretty Hate Machine, you would see that the the guns were mounted on very, very flimsy blocks, you know, collections. It's just a, a single column of blocks leading back to the chassis, and they were fully exposed. 
and I just kind of felt at the time that, you know, it's on the back end, so it's not really that big of a deal. I never really felt like I, I lost guns too fast with the Pretty Hate Machine, but still it was a weakness that I decided this time around that the guns on the back deserve a little bit better this time. <laughs> we aren't going to leave them uh, kind of just stuck up there on eye stalks. Very common shape for uh, gun mounts that I do. Making things a little bit, you know, conform to the, the shapes that are already on the bot. So we've basically got the same concept of the detached mount and then the detached uh, shroud around the mount. It, it's the same thing. And then I started, as I started building this, I was wondering why things weren't fitting properly. And then I realized it's because I started building it out uh, wrong. So we had to correct it. But the back guns, once they're on, are, are going to be kind of the... Um, they're going to be the, the basis for where we decide to put the rest of the guns because, again, we want to avoid shooting into the backs of the guns ahead of whatever gun we're talking about. So we put the the ones on the back up a couple of, of blocks. That's going to help. We put them in as close together as they could be. That's going to help. And then when we get down towards the front of the bot, that's when we'll have to start making decisions about what's going to be the, the final layout for the guns on this bot. But so far, you know, messing around a little bit in the test map from time to time as I was building, uh, it, it, it's handling pretty well. It's got a little bit of a wobble to it. As soon as we started putting the guns on top, you'll notice with the test match footage that we have today, it, it, if you start turning or if you kind of turn and then go straight, there's a little bit of a wobble to it, but nothing that we can't manage. And it also, when you start going forward, it tends to tilt down. It's not the tilt down that we had when we had the rudders on where it just kind of stuck that way and you have to stop moving in order to get rid of it. But it's kind of an interesting thing because this bot is so tall. Like if you land on the ground, this is probably one of the taller bots you're going to see in a particular match. Um, if you're looking at trying to shoot someone who's close to you, it's nice to know that, you know, from a stop, you can start moving forward and the bot will actually tip, tip down so that you can get your guns onto someone who's close. It's, it's kind of a, it, you know, it's one of those things that just works out well, uh, even though we couldn't have designed it that way in a million years because we had no idea how the bot, the bot was going to behave as far as the tipping down goes. You can see uh, the gun mounts here for the middle guns, as much to protect the hover blades as to, um, you know, put a safe, provide a safe place to put the guns. There's only so much that we can do. The, the thing is with guns these days, you generally don't lose guns if you if you have a reasonable mount you generally don't lose guns because people shot the blocks out from under the guns you lose the guns to the anti-gunbrella thing and or you know smg's uh direct fire at the guns specifically trying to peel them off of your bots it makes sense to build reasonable mounts just because you you can you know, it's one of those things, it's, it's not difficult to do, it doesn't take a ton of time, um, and, and it pays dividends down the road, but at the same time, it, it's not going to be the make or break for whether or not you're keeping the guns, because there are so many other ways that you can lose them that have nothing to do with how much you've protected them. You can't protect the guns, because if the guns are fully protected, it means they can't shoot out. And that's, it's just the nature of the beast. So we do what we can with the tools that we have, and if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. What we're really looking for is those situations where it's so imperfect that we lose the guns really, really quickly on a very regular basis. So that's what we're going to be keeping an eye out for. But in the meantime, we've got the, the middle guns now. We've got the back row, the middle row. They're a little bit farther apart so that the back row will hopefully shoot between them. It's a little bit difficult to tell by looking at them now because the, the back guns are obviously pointing to the outsides. But when we get in and test, it'll be a little bit more straightforward. I wanted at this point to see whether or not the two uh, block gap or the, even the one block gap is what it wound up being was enough to keep the back guns from shooting into the backs of the front guns. Spoiler alert, it's not. But that's kind of where I'm going. Is we're building this over the hover blades because it helps protect the hover blades from uh, bombers, mainly bombers and to a lesser extent uh, snipers that are up on elevated ridges and stuff. We were putting all this effort into rebuilding this bot that for the most part performed well, except for the later steering issues after the physics update. We, we might as well kind of put a little bit of effort into making sure that things are uh, going to work. So you can see it's huge. <laughs> it's, it just feels absolutely huge. Like when you turn, 
it leans it's it's so big and it's so heavy underneath the hover blades and that's fantastic because it's it feels very very stable at the same time the turning is good like the turning speed feels really really like you know we can spin around and shoot at a 90 degree angle not much problem whatsoever but what i'm not it's really hard to see but what i'm feeling it, it's more a sense than an actual counting uh, projectiles is that the the two projectiles from the back guns are going into the front ones you, you can't really see it super clearly but just looking at the projectiles flying away from the bot is is uh kind of that indication that there's there's something that we need to correct here and really the only thing that's available to us and something that i kind of had in mind from the beginning uh but i wanted to test the other option first and that's to put the guns, the front guns, out even wider. So, the risk here is that we're going to end up making something, some very uh, flimsy platform, because we just got in a rush and we wanted to finish the bot as soon as possible. We end up losing the guns, the front guns, very easily all the time. So, took a little bit of time, not a lot of time, but a little bit of time to kind of sit down figure out where we can put the guns relative to what we've already got on the bot. We don't necessarily want to be pulling apart shrouds over the hover blades now. We've come too far for that. But we want to kind of take a look at how we can lay things out to get that spread that we want and then build out around that again, understanding if we do it properly, we're going to lose the guns to anti-gunbrella stuff before we're going to lose it to having the, the block that the, the guns mounted on shot off. So this is just a basic framework that we're extending out now so that we can get a feel for where the guns will go and how they'll look when they're there and then like everything else we start building to you know strengthen that connection to the rest of the bot so we've got a fairly decent uh, spread now like the, <laughs> the chances of the middle guns shooting into the backs of the front guns or the back guns shooting into the backs of the front guns are pretty pretty slim you'd have to have the, the bot rotated a certain way in order for that to happen and that's largely unavoidable with any plasma hover it's we assume that we're going to be facing with all of the guns facing forward relative to the bot as opposed to you know tilted off at a 45 degree angle it's just the nature of the beast so we started off with that one kind of little loop that stuck out where we put the gun and then we built something down and now we're connecting that something to other somethings we get a much stronger connection than if it was just the, the standard kind of eye stock sort of build. Really simple, straightforward stuff. Now, the block that these guns are sitting on is fully exposed. You probably already noticed someone, I guarantee, is furiously typing already the comments. You didn't realize that this was happening. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm building it. I know. The thing is, we have to kind of gauge... First of all, how well the guns do. If it turns out it's a case where we're noticing we're, we're losing these guns very, very quickly early on, then we can correct that. We can build out around it. But if we don't need to correct it, like I, like I said, sometimes you have to try things to find out just whether or not they actually work, despite all the theory crafting that may have gone into the conclusion that we drew before we tried it. And then we can... I, I'm gonna, I left specifically a little bit of extra CPU that I, you know, if I need to build out around these a little bit better, I, if I need to kind of change things around a little bit so that they're better protected, I can do that without having to worry about gutting other parts of the bot to make it happen. But for the time being, it's mostly just about getting them in place with a platform that we're, you know, that platform itself, despite where the gun is specifically attached, is pretty beefy. You know, as, as gun mounts go, there's, that's not bad. It could have been a lot worse, trust me. And that's basically where we're at with this build, is just kind of building it out as much as we can, being aware that we might need to make some adjustments down the line. Next episode, we're going to get into... Well, one of two things is going to happen for the next episode. Either we're going to get into some match footage with this bot, or we're going to start building the uh, rotor blade bot. Rotor blades are due out tomorrow, as of the time this video is being made. And I have an idea for a bot that I would like to make. Uh, it's basically, I'll, I'll spoil it, we're going to completely redo the Panther B, and instead of being a hover walker, it's going to be a copter walker, so that we take advantage of that stable flight to get where we want to go, the legs for the stability, so that we can get the most out of the rails, and I've got an idea for the form factor, I haven't seen exactly how the copter blades get mounted yet, apparently there are five points they get mounted, so I'm kind of a little bit flexible in my mind, but I still have an idea of how I want it to look. 
it could be really cool. It could be one of the coolest looking bots that we've done, or it could be a piece of crap. You never know. So I'll let you watch the rest of this. We're just going to fly around and shoot at stuff. You can see a much better spread. Big, ponderous, heavy, beefy bot, but she's proud and she's beautiful and she's fantastic. Lots of videos coming your way, Robocraft, Robocraft related. So if you want to be notified about those videos, you can always subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on the social media, get notifications that way. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Please leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.